Right. So if everyone's sitting comfortably, or at least sitting, standing, if you will, then, uh, yeah. You okay? Okay. There was once a musician called Manesh. There he is. There he is. That's Manesh, the musician. And he played music beautifully. And he had a wife called Sunita, and she was beautiful. And they had a baby, and he was a boy, and he was beautiful. <laughs> but until he was four years old, all their son did was scream, and cry, and yell. Until one night, Manesh could take it no more. He picked his son up and silently carried him through the front door of the house. House, house. <laughs> he silently carried him through the front door of the house. He carried him through the village, through the fields, through the forest. And he carried him up the high slopes of the mountain until he came to the mouth of a cave. And in the cave there lived owls. It was said, it was said that the owls had all the knowledge about peace. They knew the value of silence, they knew the beauty of it. So Manesh sat his son at the mouth of the cave where he could see in and learn from the owls and where they could keep watch over him. And as soon as he lay his son down, he began to scream and yell and cry. <laughs> so Manesh went back down the mountain. He went back through the forests and the fields and back through the village until he came to his home. <laughs> and there waiting for him was Sunita. Her tears were stained, her cheeks were stained with tears and her eyes were ringed with red. Where is my son? she asked him. And she told him all about the cave and the owls, and she told, he told her everything that you have heard up to this point. <laughs> Suspense. And he reflected. I'm keeping. <laughs> and then, through the silence, <laughs> through the pregnant pause, <laughs> she heard the wailing. Wailing, drifting down on the wind through the top of the mountain, echoing from the cave down through the village. Through the whole night, all the village heard was the screaming. No one slept. Manesh and Sunita lay side by side, staring at the ceiling, only being able to hear the distant screaming of their son. The village as one tossed and turned with every yell. The next morning, the screaming stopped. The whole town rejoiced and Manesh immediately gathered up his things and went to collect his son. He went back through the fields, through the forest, and up the high slopes of the mountain until he came to the cave. And there, <coughs> nothing. His son was gone. Manesh panicked. He looked desperately around the clearing, calling his son's name. Adrenaline pumped through his veins. Blood thundered in his ears. Sweat poured from his face. And then he stopped. Breath came short and shallow. <coughs> he looked into the cave, took a step towards it, went inside. He was confronted by a sea of eyes, yellow eyes blinking. <coughs> and there, in the center of the owl eyes, there they were, two human pupils, two human retinas, two human whites of the eyes. <coughs> My son, he asked. Hello, father, the eyes replied. Come here, let me see you. And his son stepped into the midday light. And as it crept 
up his body, slowly illuminating. Manesh gasped. Feathers sprouted from his son's forearms, from his neck, and where his nose had been, there was only bone jutting out, jugged, and in the shape of a beak. <laughs> his son made a noise like that for reasons that will become clear later. <laughs> You try and build tension. <laughs> it's got worked exactly like this. What have you done to my son? asked Manesh. An owl landed on his shoulder and twittered. And slowly, in the voice of the ages, with voice as patient as time itself, he heard the owl say, you have three days. No one must talk to your son. No one must see him. You must be at your most disciplined. And at the end of the three days, at dawn of the fourth morning, if you do as I say, your son will be returned to you and will scream and yell no more. Manesh picked up his son tenderly. He wrapped him in his shirt and material. And half scrambling, half running, he took him back down through the mountain, through the forest, through the fields, and to his home. He ran into the house and gathered up fruit and rice and bread and water. And with his son and everything that he collected, he took his son to the darkest and most central room in the house closed his eyes tight and kissed his son's forehead. Feathers brushed his chin. And with a tear he laid his son down on the cold floor. He stepped out of the room and Sunita was waiting for him, quavering with fear at her husband's haste at what he was carrying in the bundle. He took her in the shoulders and told her everything that had happened. He told him of what the <coughs> owls had said and of the cave. Are you able to do this? he asked. Can you not look at our son for the next three days? Tears welled in her eyes. But she stood tall and proud and looked her husband and said, yes, for our son, I can do this. Don't worry, said Manesh, we won't leave him. And they got blankets and water and laid themselves down by the door. For three days, they kept a constant vigil over their son, listening for any hint of change. For two days and nights, Manesh did not sleep. And then on the third night, his eyes able to stay open no longer, he fell into sleep and dreamt of running and wings and forests and yellow eyes in the darkness. Sunita couldn't sleep. For two days, she'd been able to listen to nothing but the whimpering of her son from behind the door. Whether in pain or in fear, she didn't know. All she knew was concern, and all she had was love. Even for her husband, who had caused all of this, with his impatience and his belief in the words of the owls. Towards morning, on the third night, Sunita could take it no more. Her son's whines grew louder, harsher, more guttural. She peeked through a crack in the hinge of the door. And on the floor she saw a hint of talon, wing, feather, and her son writhing in pain in the agony of change. Her instincts overcame her. Before she knew what she was doing, before she could stop herself, her hand moved to the handle of the door. She turned and pulled in anguish. She looked in and called her son's name, and even as she did, she saw him change into a bird and fly into the night. Manesha woke as she ripped open the door. And even as the cry of no leapt from his lips, his son flew out of the house. He swooped over the village. He dove over the fields 
and he flew high above the forests. Forest. Forest. <laughs> Until he came to the cave of the owls, where they'd been waiting for him. <laughs> they were waiting very loudly for him. In a way that almost kills the really emotional ending, but let's not go there. <laughs> And from that day forward, Manesh could not play music anymore, however beautiful it came to him in his mind. And Sunita and Manesh never spoke another word. And they learnt the true value of silence. Thanks very much.